tiny pudding, so bring it out here. My tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, good evening to everyone. The Office of the Borough Presidents, um, Eric L. Adams, um, joined together with um, all of Brooklyn and around the world to talk about this season of not only light in the world with the lights, but also understanding that even in the worlds of darkness, with the things that have been said, that Brooklyn stands together as one Brooklyn. And this evening, uh, we come together with faith leaders who are going to join the Borough President in a few moments. Um, we just want to reflect on what has transpired throughout the year and kind of look at what we can do better as individuals moving forward for world peace and global tolerance. Uh, of course, the message of peace is always important during these times of upheaval in the world and also with the really tough political climate of not recognizing every race or religion on the same platform. And so today is a, a time that we come together as one Brooklyn to really stand united. On Saturday evening, Rabbi Elaine Lipman and a host of religious leaders came together to light the menorah candle um, here at the same steps of Borough Hall. And it was a fascinating and moving ceremony to see how the different faiths, religion, background, creed uh, came together with one message, was the message of hope. And that all individuals are welcome to the shores of America and especially to Brooklyn. And so our message again in these times of joyful singing and family time we again we stand together united as one brooklyn uh today we are joined by uh faith leaders and members from the muslim communities and so um as the borough president comes forward this evening um he will be joined by the different community and faith leaders who are joining us today uh, you're going to hear from Rabbi Elaine Lipman as well, and we want to recognize from the Turkish Consulate General, the Turkish Consulate General of New York, Sarat Aku, who is here with us as well, and for your friendship and your partnership with the Borough President and with Brooklyn on a whole. Um, so we have religious leaders, we have um, um, diverse leaders. We have Reverend Martino who was here. We have Reverend Lipman who is going to join us. We have Mark Appel. We have Gehan from the Turkish community. We have Reverend White, Whitehead. Uh, we have um, a few chaplains. We have our friends from the Pakistani committee, co community. Uh, we have also two Asan. So we're just going to join with the borough president as he comes forward. So it, it gives me a, a great pleasure to introduce to you uh, the, 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 pre the Brooklyn Borough President, Eric L. Adams. I'll ask that the faith leaders come forward to this time. Okay. Thank you, thank you for coming out. And all these faith leaders made the weather what it is. Uh, Assembly Woman Joan Simon, come up. I want to um, step aside and let uh, Commissioner Jeffries, who each year makes it possible for us to continue uh, to bring this celebratory holiday spirit. Come on, Commissioner, say a few words for us. Pastor. Very appropriately, have a big crowd out here tonight. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Barrow President, thank you so much. Uh, and I bring greetings on behalf of the mayor and uh, Parks Commissioner Mitchell Silver. Um, this is a very special time for all of us. And Mr. Borough President, thank you for not only being um, so supportive of parks and open spaces, but we so appreciate this message of One Brooklyn, and I think the message we're hearing tonight of One World. Uh, it was said before, and I often think about this, there are so many religions that celebrate light uh, at this time of year. 
whether it's the menorah or a Christmas tree or other candles or even looking at celestial bodies, the return of those. And, um, you know, we see in this light clarity and understanding. And hopefully this understanding can bring us peace in this world in this time that is uh, so chaotic. So, uh, Mr. Borough President, we applaud you for your efforts. And everyone, have a great holiday. Happy Thank holidays. You. Thank you. I just want to give my instructions from Pastor Monroe, you know. <laughs> okay, we want to um, hear from some, some of our interfaith uh, uh, leaders who are here. We, I know while we were away, we had a great moment um, in the light of the uh, menorah on Saturday, and Rabbi uh, Libnit was very much a part of that. It was her idea, and we want to thank her for that, and we want to hear from her now, Rabbi Libnit. Good evening, everybody. As you heard, I'm Rabbi Ellen Lippman, and um, next to me is Cantor Lisa B. Siegel from Kolot Kainu, Voices of Our Lives in Park Slope, Brooklyn. And uh, as the borough president said, on Saturday night, we had several hundred people gathered here from all the faiths of Brooklyn, leaders from every faith speaking uh, with one message. That message was, as we called our event, Shed Light on the Darkness say yes to supporting Syrian refugees, and say no to anti-Muslim hate. Or as one of our speakers expanded it, say no to hate and say yes to love. Say yes to love. And we were gathered this way because we were hearing an awful lot of messages that seemed to us to be saying, say yes to hate. And it felt like it was time to stand up and gather as many voices and speak as loudly and as often as we need to to counter that message and to remember that we want to say no to hate as loudly as we can and yes to love. I go back um, always thinking of my family and so many other families in Brooklyn who came through Ellis Island and I remember always what it says at the base of Lady Liberty Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Why should anybody feel less welcome now than my ancestors may have felt 100 years ago, than some of your ancestors felt longer ago? And we have to note at the same time, of course, that sadly, the racism that led slaves to be brought here against their will and without desire continues to show its ugly face everywhere around our country. And so we continue in that way as well, to say no to hate and yes to love. Maybe our country can be again a welcoming place. Maybe it can be for the first time a place of freedom for the descendants of African slaves. Maybe it can become a place of welcome and of love. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Hear those words from Cantor Siegel as well. And these words were put to music by Irving Berlin, who I'm sure also had refugees and immigrants in his family. And the words come from Emma Lazarus. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shores. Send these, the homeless tempest-tossed to me. Beside the golden door. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we want to bring Reverend Martino. 
God bless everyone. It's a very special moment where Brooklyn comes together and we thank God for our borough president, Eric Adams, that he starts something new. And we want to thank God that uh, today is the day that we start love and let's bring love into the city. Praise God. Love is in the city and we thank God for it. May God bless every home and let us get ready to celebrate the gift of God. God bless everyone. And represent the Muslim community, uh, Erhan. Dear friends, dear colleagues, Brooklynites, there's a spirit in the holiday spirit. We celebrate with everything. But you know, you all know that the refugee crisis is up and the poor president just recently came back from that. And I was thinking what to do and I'm sure you already saw the videos when they came to Canada and they, all the girls and the boys, they were chanting a religious song. Do you remember that? Did you see that? So I'm gonna do the same thing tonight to honor that holidays. وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دا أنت شمس أنت بدر أنت نور على نور أنت مصباح السرايا يا حبيبي يا رسول. Thank you. I wanted um, all um, of our religious and faith-based leaders to speak before I had an opportunity uh, to share with you uh, how important this moment uh, is. Uh, two thirds of Americans did not want the group to come fleeing hatred. It was not Syrian refugees. It was our Jewish brothers and sisters who were fleeing Nazi Germany. History has shown us that a large number of Americans would turn their backs when individuals are fleeing persecution. But history has also shown us that a substantial number of Americans were courageous enough to stand up and open their doors throughout history and allow people to come to experience our American way of life. Courage is found in every generation, but every so often courage skips a generation. Courage will not skip our generation. We will stand up for the refugees of Syria and let them know that we as Americans understand the importance of that. And let me share this with you. We landed last night from Syria. My council and our representative and I came back with a renewed spirit and renewed energy. When you look at the faces of those children, who love America, and they receive cards of greetings from school children here in Park Slope, Brooklyn. When you saw that the vision of hope was in their faces, we cannot allow them to be radicalized. We must Americanize and have them embrace democracy as a way of life. What makes us great as a country is the hyphen the hyphen is what makes us special. Irish hyphen American, Jewish hyphen American, African hyphen American, Trinidadian hyphen American, Chinese hyphen American, Pakistani hyphen American. What is unique about America that is not found anywhere else on the globe is that we embrace that hyphen and create this new in in Whoa. individual and new energy. It's about that hyphen. That hyphen is everything we represent. We cannot allow anyone to take that hyphen away from us. We would out-trump Trump 
and let him know that Americans will never turn their backs on any group that needs to find safety and refuge. Those children are so important. If we do not bring them in, if we allow those young people to wander in a wilderness and to be radicalized by hateful thinking and hateful people, then we are kicking the can down the road and our children are going to have to deal with the problem of countless number of children who feel as though the globe has turned their backs on them. We are not going to allow that to happen. To happen. And that's the purpose of today, to be creative in our energy, to use the menorah and the lighting of the menorah to allow us to come together and reflect on the persecutions of people throughout history to use the lighting of the Christmas tree and all the Christmas spirit and the celebratory atmosphere of Christmas of how we reflect on those children who read the cards from these children here in Brooklyn. We are in an important place. We know that the dialogue and the narrative can change in this country so quickly. As an African American, I know what it was to go through and our ancestors went through. Early Chinese were persecuted as they built the railroad system that they couldn't ride on. Early Irish were persecuted when they came here. Early Italians were persecuted when they came here. Early Jews were persecuted. Early Caribbeans were persecuted. There's a history of persecution, but there's also a history of retribution and a history of acknowledging we are better than denying people access to American dream. This is our moment to show how great we are as a country. And I want to be a part of that. And that's why we're using this moment, both Muslim and Jewish and Christian, to say that no matter what the rhetoric is across the globe, no matter how many people want to demonize those who wear a hijab or go to a mosque or go to a synagogue or Baptist church or Buddhist temple, that won't happen in the borough of Brooklyn. Hey. We're going to use the energy in this borough to cascade throughout the entire city and the entire country. We will get it right in Brooklyn. Brooklyn will be a place where we will use our voice, we will use the opportunities, we will use the creativity to further push the conversation that humanity will outshine any form of ugliness that anyone will try to do. And so our message to all of our presidential candidates, we've come too far as a country to turn around. We've come too far as a country to turn around. Rubio, your family came from an immigrant background. Trump, your family came from an Im immigrant background. Carson, your family came from an immigrant background. We all came from an immigrant background. We are not going to allow those doors to close again. We are the welcome mat for all who wants to come and experience the American way of life. If we don't Americanize, we will allow them to be radicalized and we're not going to allow that to happen. And so I thank all of you who have stopped and decided to come out and experience this with us. As we join together as one member of the greatest race alive, and that's the human race, and we are part of that human race and that human family. We're gonna close, and before we light the tree, with Pastor Whitehead would give us a prayer before we light the tree. Pastor Whitehead. Father, we thank you today, and we ask you to heal the land, for your word says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek, seek their, stay from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Father God, we send prayers of grace, prayers of mercy to heal the land. Change the minds of the individuals that are doing evil things. Love our children, love this generation. Captivate their hearts, touch their minds, touch their visions, touch their ears. Love on them, Lord. Cover them with your blood. For we thank you, we love you. Amen. We want, we want to bring all of our leaders, but I want to bring in uh, who has constantly been a partner um, as we continue to embrace 
uh, this borough and bring our borough together, we have not had a greater partner uh, than Assemblywoman, former district leader, Joanne Simon. Simon. Good evening. Thank you to all the faith leaders and to the borough president for bringing everyone together tonight. I was here the other night as well, and we had a wonderful, wonderful interfaith experience celebrating the seventh night of Hanukkah with, and now it's, <laughs> that may be a sign. Uh, let me just say one thing. Uh, as several people have talked about, this is a season of light and how so many religions go to and discuss light and have ceremonies and celebrations about light. This year on Christmas, we will have a full moon. And I think that this year it is particularly appropriate and particularly lucky for us as humans that on Christmas night, we will have a full moon for the first time in almost 20 years. And we won't have another one for another 20 years or so. And perhaps it's a sign. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we want to give our religious faith-based leader. Eight, five, four, three, two, one. Hey. Yeah.